Hi everyone, my name is Diego Castellanos. I am a seminarian for the Archdiocese of San Antonio. Uh, I know you're probably wondering, who is this guy? Um, well, your teacher has asked me today to talk to you a little about uh, something called vocation. Um, and so I know you might be thinking, that sounds a lot like vacation, that sounds like fun. Um, it's not vacation, but it is just as fun. Um, so what is a vocation? A vocation is something that uh, we all have. We all have a vocation. Uh, a vocation is a calling from God. Um, so it's not really like God like calling you on the phone and saying, hello, how's it going? Um, but rather it's Him um, calling you to love Him, to serve Him, um, and to know Him. And so everybody uh, is called to do this in a very different way. Um, as you might be wondering, if you heard what I said, I said I'm a seminarian. What, now, what exactly is that? What does that mean? Um, well, so that means that I'm studying to be a priest. Um, and so for me, my vocation uh, is to be a priest. So I've been called uh, by God to do this. Um, and if he wants me to do this, then he'll help me get through it. Um, and if not, then that's okay. Then he'll call me to something else. Um, but your teacher told me that you had a lot of very interesting questions. Um, and so I'm here uh, just doing my best to answer them. And if you have any more questions, or if you wanted to follow up on any of the uh, answers I gave, then please let me know. Uh, please let your teacher know and she'll let me know and then I can do my best at answering them. Okay, so the first question I had is, what does a priest do? Um, and that's a great question. You know, sometimes we think that the priest is just a guy at Sunday Mass who's up there and he wears very nice colors and um, he's just celebrating the Mass. but. Really, the priest does a lot more than that. Um, along with the Mass and um, doing the things that he does on Sunday, uh, he also helps with the distributing of the other sacraments. So I don't know if you learned your sacraments yet, but we have seven different sacraments in the church, um, and the priest helps to um, facilitate those and helps other people make sure they're, they're able to get those sacraments. So that's one of the big things that he does. Um, but he's also like a father to the parish. Um, and so he is there for anything anyone might need. Um, if people need to talk to somebody, he's there. Um, if someone needs advice, whatever it might be, or even just small things around the parish, he's there to help, um, to be that father figure for the parish. And that's why we call them father. Um, yeah. So why do we have priests? Um, and that kind of goes with the other answer I just gave. Um, so priests are uh, primarily uh, in the community of the parish uh, so that we can have the sacraments because without priests, we wouldn't have sacraments. Um, and so it's very important for them to be here uh, for us uh, and serve the people of God. Um, and they can help you whenever uh, you're old enough to be receiving your first communion. Um, they'll be there also at your confirmation and through all, all the different stages of your life, there'll be priests there uh, to help you and whatever you might need. Um, and we need them there because uh, they act, like I said, as fathers, as father figures. Um, so many of us have our own dad that, you know, we know at home as dad, daddy, whatever it might be. Um, but this priest, uh, he acts as a spiritual father. So he helps you kind of understand God and get to know him better. Um, and so that's, that's why we need priests. So why did I choose to become a priest? Um, so that's a good question. So I chose to become a priest mainly because uh, how much I love God, how much I love Jesus. Um, you know, when I was a little bit younger, um, I felt that God was calling me to do this. Like I said earlier, that's what a vocation is. God is calling you to do something. Um, and so I just prayed, prayed about it, really thought about, okay, if, if this is what God is calling me to do, then the best thing for me to do is follow that, to listen to God. Um, and so I decided this is the way that God is calling me um, to serve people and to help people. And I really enjoy helping people. And so that's a big part of why I wanted to become a priest. Um, the next question is, how long does it take to become a priest? Now that... Um, is a question that is different for everybody. But um, in my case, I have six years, six more years to become a priest. And I've been studying for about two years. Um, so for me, it would be about eight years. 
Um, and you might be thinking, okay, why, why so much studying? Why so much school? Um, that seems like so much for someone that goes up and just does sacraments and uh, does all the things that I mentioned earlier. Well, try to think of it like this. If you had a doctor um, and that doctor was there primarily to help you get better and make you feel better and cure all your boo-boos and things like that, um, you would want to make sure that that doctor has really good training and he knows what he's doing. And doctors usually take around eight years, eight years to get their uh, license, to get their degrees, all those things. And so you want a really good doctor. What's well, the same thing with priests? You want someone that uh, when they're helping you um, grow closer to God, they know what they're talking about. They've studied it um, for many, many years. And so you want to have somebody that knows what they're talking about. Um, and that's primarily why it takes so long, um, but it's so worth it to become a priest. Um, with that, another question is, do you have to learn any new languages? Actually, uh, here in San Antonio, we asked our seminarians to uh, not only speak English, but also Spanish. Um, as you, many of you may know, um, or even some of you may do, uh, there's a big Spanish-speaking community here in San Antonio. I myself um, was blessed enough to grow up in a house where we spoke both English and Spanish. Um, so it hasn't been that big of a deal for me to try and learn a new language, but maybe sometime in the future I'll learn a different language uh, just to help any other communities that might need it. Um, but yes, so learning languages is always good because with new languages you can help a new group of people that beforehand you probably wouldn't be able to help. So. It's always good to learn new languages. So next question. How long do you have to be a priest for until you can retire? Um, so this question uh, made me laugh when I first read it. Um, so thank you for whoever uh, wrote this question. Um, and it's a good question. You think about it because, um, you know, priests do get old and then we think about, okay, are they going to retire? And then if they retire, what does that look like? Um, and the thing about priests is that once you become a priest, um, we say become ordained. So once you become ordained a priest, um, you're a priest forever. Um, and what that means is that from the moment that you become ordained until God calls you into heaven, um, that you're a priest. Um, but does that mean that you're working the whole entire time, even when you're really, really old? No, that doesn't mean that. So just like with normal jobs, there's a certain age where um, the priests are a little bit too old to keep working. They can't uh, keep up as much as the younger guys. And so they just ask them to help out here and there, wherever they can. But uh, even if they're really, really old, 90, 100, whatever it might be, they're still able to help out with the sacraments and uh, also always pray for the people. That's a big part of being a priest is praying for the people. Um, and they can always do that no matter how old they are. So... Enough with the priest questions. Uh, another question we have here is, what does a nun do? So that's a great question. Um, as you can see, I'm not a nun, um, but I'll do my best to answer this question. So nuns, um, what nuns do is that they are women in the church that decide that um, they want to also give their whole life to God. Um, and they wanna do this in different ways. And so there's different communities of nuns um, and each one specializes in different things. So, for instance, one group might say, um, we want to help the poor. And so that's what they focus on. They go and they um, have different ministries. They help out the poor. They feed them. They clothe them. Whatever it might be. Um, there might be other groups that say, we want to help the elderly. So they go to old folks' homes and they sing for them and then they talk to them. Um, and... All throughout that, no matter what group the women want to join to become a nun, um, a big part about being a nun is also prayer. Uh, spending a lot of time praying, um, talking to God, asking Him for help, um, not only for themselves, but for others. Um, as you may have learned in your classes that we don't only uh, have to pray for ourselves, but we have to pray for others. I know sometimes that um, you want to pray for your parents, or you might want to pray for your grandparents, your friends, all those things. So the nuns spend a lot of time doing that, um, saying thank you and also asking for help in prayer. So another question, um, and this one I really enjoy. 
is how do they wash your sins with just water? Now this is a really good question. This is a very high, big boy, big girl question. Um, so uh, this could mean many things. If you're speaking about baptism um, and washing away sins with baptism, um, we got to remember that baptism is a sacrament. And so when we say that your sins are being washed away with just water, it's not just water. Um, when you're saying the words, when the priest is saying the words of baptism, um, then that means that they are asking God to come down onto this person and wash away their sins. And that they do that with the sign of the water. Um, so it's not like you can grab like a Gatorade or you can grab a soda or whatever it is and do the same thing. Um, but rather, this is something that Jesus gave us. Jesus gave us this example of how to baptize, what to say, what to do. Um, and so this is what we follow. And when you're baptized, you become part of the church. Um, and so as soon as you become part of the church, you can't um, leave. There's no way because your soul is forever changed, uh, forever changed to be part of the church, part of this family. Um, and so once that's happened, then you don't have to be baptized again. But as you'll see later, sometimes we mess up and then we need to go to confessions. And then there is where we uh, deal with any other problems we may have had, any boo-boos we made, any mistakes. Um, we go to confession and, and get rid of the sins there. And I'm pretty sure your teacher will talk to you about that later. Next question. Why do we have rainbows? Wow, this question I was not expecting. So thank you for this question. Um, why do we have rainbows? So in, this, in the Bible, we hear of a story of a man named Noah. And Noah was asked by God to build this big, big boat called an ark. And so that's where we hear the story of Noah's ark. Um, and so what happened was um, there was a lot of people on earth doing really, really bad things. And so God said, you know what? Um, I need to restart. I want to have the world washed away, washed away all these things, kind of like in baptism, wash away all the bad things. Um, and so God said to Noah, he said, I'll let you and your family get on this boat, take all the animals with you, two, two of every kind, a male and a female, bring them on the boat. So Noah gathered all the animals, put them on the boat. Um, and then sure enough, when that happened, a big old flood came through. So there's a bunch of water everywhere, everywhere. Um, and they were able to stay afloat on the boat um, and they survived. And then at the end of their little trip, the water went away and God sent a rainbow. Um, and the rainbow was his promise, his promise to the people, to Noah and to us that he would never do that again. He would never create a big flood to uh, wash away uh, all the bad things that we did, but instead he would send other other things, other signs. So that's why we have rainbows, um, because God promised us that he wouldn't create a big flood like that ever again. Um, yeah. Final question, um, and I really enjoy this question as well, is why do we go to church on Sundays? Um, so I don't know if you're asking why do we go to church specifically on Sundays, or why do we go to church uh, in general and then also on Sundays? Um, so I'll try and answer both questions. So why do we go to church on Sundays specifically? Um, well, we see um, that Jesus and uh, all his followers, uh, the, the apostles, the disciples, they all celebrated and worshiped God on Sunday. Um, we also know that in the story, of Adam and Eve when uh, God is creating the world, that on the last day, uh, he decided to rest. He created everything, everything was good, everything was beautiful, and so he said, today I will rest. And so, because of that, we want to remember that day, we remember that day that God rested, not because he needed to rest, because he knew that we needed to rest. Um, and so we take that day, which is Sunday, um, to worship God, to thank Him, thank Him for everything that He created. He created the world, He created the animals, the water, the sun, the sky, our friends, our family. Um, and we want to take that day just to thank Him, say thank you to Him, um, and take the time to be with family, to be with friends, um, so that it could be truly His day. Um, and that also ties into why we go to church. 
Um, so we go to church not only to be with people we know and family and friends, um, but mainly to worship God so that we can say thank you and we can also ask him for things. We know that um, sometimes we need things, sometimes we need food, sometimes we need a home, sometimes we need friends, things like that. Um, and so God is there for us uh, whenever we need those things and we can ask him. We can always turn to him and ask him for whatever we want. Um, and if God thinks that we need it, then he'll give it to us. Um, and if he thinks that we need better, then he'll wait and he'll give us better. Um, so never forget that. Um, thank you so much for the questions. Uh, if you have any more, like I said, please keep asking them. Um, and I'll keep praying for you guys. If you keep praying for me, I think we have a deal. Um, so keep praying for me. Um, thank you so much. And this was very nice. So I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.